So my co-authors and I wrote data science and education using R to help folks in the education field learn to use data science tools in their job. And I think there are a lot of great books about learning statistical programming and data science, um, but we wanted to do one um, that makes use of specific education examples. And so we think of this book as helping readers imagine what it would be like to use a programming language like R in their everyday work. Um, the main feature of the books are the eight data analysis walkthroughs um, that we do where we go through an entire data analysis using the programming language R um, with an actual education data set step-by-step -step for the readers. Data science and education using R introduces data science and R programming to practitioners in education. Through examples, readers learn data science principles, workflows, and tools that can be applied to their work. And we hope that the book inspires new and thoughtful ways of advancing the education field. So there's some different problems to solve when we help someone learn about data science and education. Um, and the first is the most obvious one, it's learning the technical skills. So teaching the programming language R and then creating an environment where uh, folks can learn that. The second uh, is something we don't always talk about, which is learning to imagine what using these school uh, skills in a field, a particular field, um, like education or any other field, what that actually looks like. That's its own thing to learn. Uh, and then finally, the third is helping others in the organization that you work at understand the benefits of using data science tools like this, particularly if they're not using them already. So uh, my advice would be, um, however you teach data science to educators, try thinking of these as three different skills and then teaching intentionally uh, to each of them. I would encourage faculty to explain why and how data science supports students in their work. Students already have a lot on their plate, and so learning data science best practices and programming in addition to other workflows might be overwhelming. But faculty can explain how these pieces are part of a cohesive whole. Being able to explain concepts like, when should I code my analysis? Why does reproducibility matter? How do I set up my project? Those questions will help students understand how data science increases efficiency in the long term and helps them do better work. So my background is in school psychology and administration and public schools here in the United States. And so because of that, I don't spend a lot of time doing academic research myself. But I do like this question for practitioners, and I think that it's a question that they should be asking. Um, and I'll say why. Academic research findings give you results on average. Uh, we all know that. But practitioners, so I mean folks who work in the school districts, should adopt methods, their own methods to test the academic research findings in their own settings to see if they hold true. And I think this is a step that's uh, that's missed a lot. So for example, let's say a journal article comes out um, doing a randomized control trial that finds that using an online learning system in elementary schools has a measurable effect on achievement. Um, practitioners can take the methods in the research article and then they can adapt them for their own school district. Um, I think what that means is uh, the... Uh, Methods will be less formal than a randomized control trial in schools, um, and, uh, in, and and but that's okay because when we're looking at um, the practitioner's work, it's more about seeing how much of these results uh, hold true as opposed to publishing in something really formal like a scientific uh, journal. Having clearly defined research questions is crucial for understanding what data to collect, and only after developing the questions, then I look at the methodology. One thing I'd like to do is create dummy data sets based on the data that my methodology would produce. I analyze the dummy data and ask myself, does this data and this analysis truly answer the research questions? And if not, I revise the methodology and repeat. So if you're anything like me, you might find that learning a programming language is a challenging thing. I, I, it definitely was for me, and, um, and I understand that that's a, that's a fairly common experience. So if that's you, here's something that might help. I found online and in-person communities um, to, uh, to help me learn to use statistical programming for data science, learning how, how to, to, to program in any language, R, Python, or any others. 
Um, and I found some that were really welcoming and that helped me a lot. It created a safe place for me to learn. Um, so as you work your way through data science and education using R, be patient with yourself um, and find a group of people that can help. And um, eventually you'll hit your stride. I know you will. Um, and when that happens, um, my suggestion is make an effort to give back and help folks who are trying to learn. Data science means a lot of things, and there's a lot to do within data science as well. I recommend trying out the walkthroughs and thinking about what parts of the process you like the most, what parts you like the least, to help determine what you'd like to focus on in the future. Educators and consultants who are serving larger education systems, so here in the United States, I'm thinking of things like whole school districts, counties, which are collections of school districts uh, and state agencies, which are collections of districts and counties. Um, folks like that are gonna work with much larger data sets um, than you would find in say a classroom or a school. So if that's you, I think you'll get a lot out of our book. Um, once you learn the basics of programming and building repeatable processes for your analysis, I think you'll be able to, to make great use of those larger data sets that show up often in these kinds of jobs. If you're a data practitioner in the education field, you may have asked yourself at some point, is this really the best way of doing this? How do I stop repeating my analyses? How do I use these data that we've collected for new and more refined projects? So if you've ever asked yourself these questions, this book will be very helpful for you.